Extension Center and Lieutenant West is to the left. We have two fine gentlemen here that are going to give you a testimony about what they've gone through and what brought them to the Detention Center, decisions they made and consequences that followed. A little bit about the Detention Center. We are housed in Manassas, right with the Judicial Complex. We house about uh, between 1,000 and 1,050 in the uh, charges for uh, anything from uh, DWI <laughs> to capital murder. Currently, we have about uh, between 70 and 85 inmates that are being charged with murder. Uh, most of our inmates that we have, have some type of substance abuse, and these two gentlemen will talk about their life. Um, well, our goal at the detention center is to assess the inmates when they come in figure out what needs they have and what programs we can marry up with them so when they return to the community, they don't come back to the So, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Stoya. Richard. Stoya. Richard. 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 Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Hi, my name is Milan Stoya. Um, thanks for having me here today. I'm an alcoholic and I'm an addict, uh, but I'm a human being just trying to get life right. Um, I come from a God-fearing, God-loving, caring family. Uh, we moved from overseas when I was about seven years old from Bulgaria to the U.S. Just the American dream, man. Try to get it right. You know, I have a house, I have a good family. Uh, my parents wanted to move us here to get us educated, uh, to be responsible adults, to be successful. And, you know, they've always pushed us really hard in school. Me and my sister actually both did very well. I've already you know, always done very well with uh, whether it's principal or honors role. Um, you know, we went from... We went, thanks, Gap. We went from, you know, a low-income, two-bedroom apartment where me and my sister shared a room to through my parents' hard work and having multiple jobs. Um, you know, having a single family house and, and having nice cars and having nice things, um, they worked very hard for those things. And, you know, they showed us what love is and motivated us to do well. Um, I did very well in school until about middle school where you know, I was on the football team doing good, uh, started partying with friends, um, started, you know, drinking a little bit, uh, started smoking a little bit of weed and marijuana. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, Partying and, and, and being with friends you know, took priorities over the football team and doing well in school. I got kicked off the football team for basic practices and grades. Uh, you know, I actually wanted to get kicked out of middle school for just not going or partying and using and kind of took priority over that stuff, so I to school. Uh, my parents pulled me and, and, and took me to a private, uh, enrolled me into a private Christian school. I actually did rather well there for a little while. I decided to give myself to God, give my life to God. Um, and I moved away from some of the friends that I, that I was associating myself with. Um, and uh, I graduated actually a year and a half early from high school. And I elected valedictorian in my class and did rather well. Uh, on my on graduation, I decided to party with friends and not show up for my graduation. So I kind of blew that. I didn't give a speech. Uh, and, you know, I elected valedictorian. Um, I put that on somebody else to have to come up and selfie. So for me, priority took partying with my friends to celebrate instead of going to my own graduation. Um, from there, you know, I did enroll into uh, North Virginia Community College uh, when my parents pushed me to do well in school. And uh, I graduated from, from North Virginia Community College with an associate in business. I actually graduated Magna Cum Laude from that. And I did really well. I was part of our International Honor Society. Um, I started kind of, you know, dabbling with cocaine at that particular part. Uh, for me, you know, uh, using alcohol and marijuana was just a gateway drug uh, that just pushed me into doing other stuff at parties, um, thinking it's okay to hurt my body with one thing, and putting other things into there, into my body, and using with other friends. So with, with cocaine, you know, that, that just spiraled my addiction even more. I would drink, and drive, use cocaine. Uh, one night at a bar, drink, drink a little too much, um, then having more cocaine. And, you know, it messed up driving home, got DWI. Um, I engaged in my life. I engaged in the individual's life that were with me. It was my girlfriend at the time, one of my best friends. I got pulled over, and I remember I, I blew just a point one. It was a little over the legal, legal limit. But, you know, the DWI cost me about eight grand or so. I was years of loss of license. Um, you know, I couldn't get in my car driving wherever I wanted. I had to spend a couple nights in jail. 
uh, it wasn't a very fun experience. And from there, my parents kind of had like a little intervention with me. I, I try to stop drinking, and, and especially drinking and driving. I don't want to put anybody's life in danger. Um, and uh, I, I actually graduated from Melbourne and went to George Mason. From George Mason, I, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Decision Sciences. I uh, did rather well once again, um, was a part of the International Honor Society, and from there, you know, my usage just increased. Um, parties at Mason, parties with friends, um, you know, it's, I, luckily I graduated, but my, you know, my grades started down spiraling into C's instead of all A's, um, so I barely graduated towards the end. Uh, once again, I have a good support family, a good family and a good support system, so I'm very fortunate for that. Uh, they always talk to me and just try to steer me in the right path. They cared. Um, uh, I've got a good job at uh, Yoder Steel Corporation, which is in Manassas. They close now. But you know, for a purchasing manager position, I had my own office. I had an assistant. Uh, it was pretty nice to have at you know, fairly young age. Uh, paid rather well. Um, unfortunately, I did lose that job as well, just through my drugs and alcohol use. Um, I had, at that particular time, a great fiance, which, you know, she was a great girl. She didn't use, um, she didn't do drugs. She pushed me away from using and doing drugs. Unfortunately, I suffer from addiction, which is a disease that tells me I don't have a disease. So it allows me to justify in my mind that I can continue to use um, and, and, and manage all of it, which for me, my life has become unmanageable. I am powerless to my addiction. Um, so I pushed her away, uh, just as I pushed my family away. Um, and at that particular point, I pushed a lot of my friends away. Uh, I lost a lot of my friends that, you know, cared about me, man. They, they, they didn't want to see me kill myself anymore. They didn't want to see me hurt other individuals. Um, you know, I started picking up selling drugs due to the fact that I had to spoil my habits somehow. Um, you know, I, I got introduced to heroin, which was a pretty bad drug for me. Um, it's, I mean, all the drugs were bad, but this one completely destroyed my life. Um, you know, I, I wound up totaling a car, and they had to cut me and my, my girlfriend at the time out of it. The fire squad had to cut, come and cut us out. So I almost killed us. Um, I almost killed people in another car. I actually have a buddy that's fucked uh, up with me here at, at the ADC. He's getting out sometimes soon. He's a Marine. And he's on his third or fourth PWI. The uh, last time he hit somebody, he got two attempted uh, vehicular manslaughter, a hit and run, and his third or fourth PWI. And they tried to give him 15 years. Um, he had been locked up here and there before from other PWIs, but you know, let out. Um, so 15 years, kind of you know, slap in the face if somebody tells you that. Uh, he did a lot of the programs, and he's, he was actually a mentor in one of the dorms. And, you know, they reduced the sentence, but he wound up coming out getting about four to five years. So for an individual that's done great his entire life, uh, he's spent his next three to five years, or did spend his last three to five years in jail. Uh, it's, it's not something fun to deal with at all. Um, while the facility that we're at, um, the Prince William ABC, you know, they feed you a little bit better than some other facilities. They're a little bit easier to get along with than some other facilities. Uh, it's still jail. It's not fun by any means. You're locked in a room you can't get out of. You're told what to do all the time, when to sleep, when to use the bathroom, when to eat. Um, you know, it's not freedom, man. I took, I took my freedom for, for granted. Um, I was uh, on, on, got off a little topic, but I was working at Yoda Steel, got fired. I actually got a job at Delta Airlines. And from Delta Airlines, I was a supply chain management. Um, another great job, traveled the world. Uh, they gave me a company card where you know, I was able to, to charge all expenses to. Uh, that just kind of fueled my addiction even more. Uh, that allowed me just to go out and, and pay for bar tab with clients, go to casinos and pay for tab with clients or strip clubs or whatever the case is, whatever clients like, whatever we thought was a good time. Um, I actually almost pulled up the car one night coming back with the client too. Um, almost got DWI one time again, leaving another facility or another bar. I blew a point oh six. So I got you know, fortunate the fact that I wasn't at that limit. I only had a couple beers that night. Uh, but you know, instead of me driving, I could have just taken a cab or, or something to avoid that entire situation. And, and I did, of course. Um, you know, I thought it would be okay. Once again, I suffer from disease that tells me things are okay. Um, you know, so at, at, at Delta Airlines, I actually wound up doing a bunch of heroin and falling asleep on my desk twice and got fired. So great paying job. Uh, 
you have to do almost anything. I, I wanted you to travel the world first class and get a company card. I would fail the airlines. Um, my addiction just spiraled even more out of control. I uh, just usage way higher. Um, I started using stuff like carfentanil, which is actually killing a lot of people nowadays. It didn't kill me, so I, you know, um, I've lost a lot of friends, unfortunately, to heroin and other addictions. Um, I have friends that totaled vehicles and died because of drinking and driving accidents. Um, overdose. Um, I think we did a little thing in the drug room, which is one of the um, one of the programs I graduated at ADC, where we had sticky notes for all the people that we know that have died. I'm telling you, man, we, there was a whole board full of just sticky notes of people that died. It's not just heroin overdoses, it's through drinking and driving, or, you know, or gun violence because of alcohol and, 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 and drugs. Uh, it's pretty sad to see how many people died so quick while we were locked up or just in our lives. Um, so I'm fortunate and I feel like God's left me here for, for a purpose, for a reason. Um, I'm changing my life and I've rededicated my life to God. Uh, now I've been locked up for about 11 months. Um, I, after getting fired from Delta Airlines, my, my addiction spiraled out of control and I started selling even more. I got arrested for two possession and intents. I had two ounces of dope, half ounce of, uh, excuse me, two ounces of heroin, half ounce of cocaine, and a pistol, and a conspiracy to distribute charge. They were trying to give me like eight years at first. So, uh, this is my first bid. I've never been locked up before this, besides just a couple nights that I did for the DWI. So, it was just a slap in the face, you know. I didn't even thought that I would get in so much trouble for trying to do drugs and satisfy my flesh. Um, I did a lot of the programs, and I showed uh, I think the Commonwealth that I want to change my life. I want to help individuals as much as I can. Um, and you know, starts with thank you for having me here. Um, I know that I need to help myself first before I can help others, so I'm concentrated on my recovery. But they were able to get my sentence down to two years, three months. I've done 11 months of it already, and hopefully I'm about to get work release. So just looking to better my life and recover what I have in the past. Um, I believe through sobriety and through God that that's possible. I'm working the 12 steps at this current moment. I, I know that my life is unmanageable and, and uh, my addiction is, is unmanageable and I'm powerless over it. I'm actually on step nine, which is making direct demands to individuals that I've wronged. I can only do so much from in jail. I'm trying to get out and do what I can um, in person as well. So hopefully I'll have a chance here to do that too. I'm concentrating on, 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 on fixing myself. I've actually just cut off a lot of friends that are not going to change. Unfortunately, I want to be there for them, but I know if I'm trying to be there for them, they're just going to pull me into it. A uh, good friend the other day told me they'll get me high before I get them sober. Uh, and he's right. Uh, I'll be honest with you. So I want to stay strong and just stay away from some of them, try to guide them in the right path until I know I'm fully recovered and, and, and can help myself. Um, the drug dorm and, and, and the different dorms and the programs that I've done at ADC have kind of given me the tools to. To, to use in my, in my toolbox when I get out and, and, and try to attempt to stay sober. Uh, you know, I've done things from trying to relocate to different different places. I went and traveled all over Europe to get away from drugs. I just wound up drinking and getting into other kinds of drugs that are available in Europe. There's plenty of them. drugs available everywhere if you're looking. So I know it all starts with me, not where I'm at. Uh, definitely people will empower you. Places might help, but it all starts with me. Um, admitting that I have the issue and, you know, learning from this, man, you know, I'm just, I never want to come to jail again in my life. Um, it's not something that I think is okay. Some people seem to think it's okay, um, but, you know, I can tell you it's not where you want to be. If you continue to use drugs or, or alcohol, if you use them, you'll end up in orange drugs you like me eventually. It's not, not very fun. So, I'm trying to change my life. I know it's one day at a time, sometimes just an hour at a time. Sometimes it's one lockdown at a time at, <laughs> at uh, the ADC. So, you know, I think through God and just through my motivation, I have to do it, man. Sure. Um, my name is Antonio Burton. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Antonio Burton. Um, I'm currently incarcerated at this. And that's because I'm the ADC. I'm currently serving a two and a half year sentence, one year for probation violation, and a year and six months for um, DWI possession. Uh, man, I'm gonna um, let y'all know a little bit of something about, about me. Um, I'm 
a father of five kids. And um, through my, you know, as we call it in um, our program, through, my, uh, due to my stinking thinking, you know, it, it caused me throughout the um, years of my life to basically not be in my kids' life. Um, I'm gonna say, um, when I was a child, I mean, I pretty, pretty, had, um, pretty much had a good, good childhood. Um, you know, my parents, I mean, they did what they could to provide for um, me and my sister. You know, um, you know they kept a um, roof over our head, closing up back, food on the table. I mean, they also did drugs when I was um, young. Um, so, I mean, I, to me, I would say they was functional, functional addicts. You know, like they, um, they never had a problem without, um, without working or anything like that. But um, I got introduced to drugs at, I think I was like 14, 15 years old. I was in middle school. Um, you know, I would hang um, out with my older cousins. I mean, I, I'm, I got a big family. I'm a from Stafford, so I, I got a real big family out there. That's the majority of who I ain't but you know, even as an adult now, I, I, I'm a majority of who my friends. I, I really don't have too many outside friends. I'm not social, but I really don't have too many outside friends. I basically have my family. But um, me seeing my, what my cousins was getting, you know what I'm saying, through the drugs, you know, as far as nice clothes, nice shoes, you know, um, cars. You know what I'm saying? They always had nice women or whatever. You know, that's something that, uh, that draw my attention. You know, that was something that, that I wanted. I mean, like I said, my parents provided for us, but it wasn't always the best. You know, um, I dropped out of school my ninth grade year. Yeah, my ninth grade year. Um, I had a chance to play basketball and everything. But due to me seeing the street life and wanting what the street life was offering, I said to hell what school. Um, so basically, I became a full-time drug dealer at the time. I, mean, I, I smoked marijuana, but I was really wasn't at the time. I really wasn't big on you know using drugs as a drug, selling it. And, um, I was 17 when I first. Caught my first my first drug charge, my first possession charge. I was um I caught it out here in Manassas. I don't know if y'all familiar with um Georgetown South, but I was out there in Georgetown South when I caught my first uh, drug charge. And um went to juvenile detention center. I did a month a month there. You know, basically I I gotta stop on the wrist. You know what I mean? Um so me getting a stop on the wrist. I mean, it didn't change the way I wanted to go about, to go about life. I mean, I still wanted what the um, drug game was offering. I mean, I could sit there and make $300 to $500 in a day, like it was nothing. So, I know my mother, she always just like, boy, you need to get jobs. I don't need to get a job. You know what I mean, y'all waiting you know, all week for a paycheck. So, I'll make it a week, I'll get right here in the day. So, yeah, once I fell in love with that drug game, man, it, it, was, it was, I was all in, you know. Once I, um, on my first drug child, like I said, it, it didn't tell me nothing, you know. I still thought I could do things on my own. I still wanted to do what Antonio wanted to do. I ain't want to, I wasn't going to listen to nobody, when nobody going to tell me different. And, but when I caught my second drug child at the age of 18, a year later, you know, I started realizing, like, damn, you know, maybe I need to do something different. And I told myself, I don't need to do nothing different because I got to stop on the wrist. I ain't getting up to probation. You know, I've been incarcerated throughout my life over 13 times. I've been in out of jail and prisons basically half my life. You know, I, I really, my life's been a blur. You know, I'm a, I'm a father of five kids. You know, I've been in our day life probably I can't even count. It seemed like I would get out, make a baby, go back in, get out, make another baby, go back in. So I basically, I mean, I was, I was never in my kids' life on a consistent basis. And that was due to 
me thinking I got all the answers. Me thinking I go out here and get the next day. I go in there, I get a melt stop on the wrist. So I'm, I'm like, damn, what a, shit, I could do this all all day long. They're going to be getting stopped on the wrist. It wasn't until, um, it wasn't until this time, man, and now I'm, I'm 38 years old, so you can't imagine me getting incarcerated half of my life. Like I said, I, I went from a, a kid to a teenager to a adult fast. And I, ain't, I mean, I never had a job. I ain't get a job until I came home from prison in 20, 2015, 2015. That was basically my first real job. And I was working at a chicken home factory. I mean, for real, I was happy because it was the first, it was something I accomplished. I mean, I, it seemed like um, I accomplished more in jail and prison than I did on the street. Like every time I would go to prison, I mean, I really didn't do too much as far as in the jail since when I first started getting caught. When I first time I went to prison, I went to prison. I um, I got a, um, a wellness license. You know, second time I went to prison, I went and got a building maintenance license. You know, and I got my GED at the same time. So it's, it's ironic that you know I could sit there and accomplish things in prison, but. I never seem to accomplish anything on the streets. And it's because of my thinking, you know, I, I figure I'm always trying to make up for what I lost. You know, um, when I got out, like I said, when I got out in 2015, man, I, um, I got me a job within two weeks of me being home. Everything was going good. You know, me and my baby mother had got back together. She was pregnant at the time. And, um, me, personally, it's when I get this little window. Like, I was on probation, but being that I had a job, the probation officer told me, well, you can come back and see me every three months. So me, being the criminal that I am and the addict that I am, I'm like, well, shoot, I can go ahead and get away. I can go ahead and stick me some cocaine. That was my drug of choice, cocaine. I said, I can go ahead and stick me some cocaine, you know? You don't stay in my system up for three days, three to five days, as long as I don't do too much of it. You know, I can go in here, do some cocaine, then go see the PO, be the pee um, test or urine screen, and everything. But once I started using, I started using more on an everyday basis. Like, it was times that I would go to work, and I would use at work. You know, and um, then I found myself calling in to work, you know what I mean? Cocaine, it kept me up at night. So, and I had a night job. So, I would come home, still be sniffing cocaine. Next day I call in, I ain't going to work. You know, and at the job I had, you know what I mean? Like, they had, had me on a 90 day probation um, thing where I couldn't miss work for 90 days. Well, I wouldn't even, excuse me, I wouldn't even at work probably a month and I was already missing missing days of work. But um yeah that was um due to my um man, just due to my negative thinking man that's, that's always got me in trouble man. Cause it, it, basically I mean you know I had a lot of people where I'm at right now say you know because of their childhood bringing up I can't even blame them on that because my parents did what they could as you know, as far as raising me, you know, I, I think, me personally, I chose my own path. They say you always got a choice of what you want to do in life. And I chose, you know what I mean, to go to the streets and, and basically choose the streets over my family, my kids, my responsibilities. You know, um, this, is a this, this is what I got every time I done it. Like, every time I chose the streets, this is where I end up at in the old school um, jump season. You know, every time it never fails. You know, um, this time I was um, just starting the last group, man, where um, really opened my eyes up was my um, my oldest daughter. She's 19 right now, and she stays out Georgia. And, um, she had told me, man, she really opened my eyes. She's like, Dad, you ain't even been in my life. Probably but even half, not even half of it. You know, to you, you know what I'm saying? Every time you come home, you start selling drugs, you use the drugs, you mess around with the 
that's when I get locked up again. And this time, and she, um, I just, I, I just had a little um, daughter back in August of 2016. So she's about a year and a half, man. And my daughter even brought that to my attention. She's like, now look, she's about to be out of her life just like you was out of mine. So that's what made me do the drug going. But um, it's a malad we said that talking about. And I done it, completed it. You know, so I said, I'm going to go ahead and take it a step further. I'm going to go ahead and try to become a mentor. Maybe me telling my story, you know, amongst the people that um, come in and that's getting ready. Because um, I'm in a recovery going right now. So that's like a step before you go to the drug bro. So that's, that's basically getting you prepared to go to the drug dorm. So I figured I would go ahead and become a mentor over there. That way, the people that's coming in, I can share my story with them. And hopefully, you know, change their way of thinking and change, you know, their behavior. Because, I mean, me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, I'm tired of living the way I was living. You know, I'm tired of getting incarcerated. I mean, I'm 38 years old. I'll be 39 this year. I'm almost 40. You know, like I said, I've barely been in the streets. I've been incarcerated over half my life. I barely seen my kids grow up. You know, so I mean, I, I dedicated this time to basically to my kids because me personally, I think they deserve better. They deserve a father that's going to be there and that's going to guide them in the right direction. So. Yeah, hopefully this time I get it right. God willing. Thank y'all.